Okay. So, th this is kind of funny because I had this pointed out to me a little bit earlier. You notice my name's on the slide and I'm talking about anonymous browsing. That's <laughs> kind of counterproductive, right? So that's the whole battle about anonymous browsing. You're always trying to hide your identity. You basically got to separate the two. Uh, I first want to start off with a few definitions. Uh, the click would work. Anonymous versus private. Anonymous is trying to prevent people from telling who you are. So an example would be like posting on Reddit and no one knowing who that Reddit user is. Uh, private is more of like sending a text to someone and expecting no one, able, no one to be able to see what's inside the text. People can still know you're texting, but they don't know what you're texting about. Uh, the next definition is a digital footprint. Uh, it's a unique ID that everyone has online. It, uh, <coughs> It's a set of digital activities, actions, and communications that leave a data trace on the internet or on a computer or a digital device and can identify the particular user or device. They're so good at this, they can actually identify the size of your web browser and it's just crazy. It's really scary after a while. Metadata, uh, the government can kill you over metadata if they have the right kind of information. Uh, this is uh, who you talk to, when you talked, where you talk, how long, on what device, on what software. Uh, why should you be, or why, why do I want to be anonymous? Simply just because I can. Uh, a good reason though is our privacy is constantly being breached. Uh, if you look online, you can constantly see stories. These two talk about uh, 16 stores that were breached and 18 big data breaches that happened in the 21st century. It's getting out of hand how much this happens. Also, you have ISPs that are constantly tracking you. Uh, they try to throttle your bandwidth if you're uh, doing activities they don't want. They can uh, present, prevent certain regions from accessing websites, and uh, they log your data all the time. There's also data brokers and advertisers. I won't get into too much about this, but we all know how bad advertising is these days. Every website you go to has to advertise it, every pop-up Although there's, every, there's always a pop-up on these websites too. The next thing is, of course, hackers or black hatters. What you should really be calling them is criminals. <laughs> uh, there's also large companies like Microsoft, Verizon, Amazon, Google, Facebook. Do you just think of any big company that are tracking your data, big data? Of course, we start getting into Big Brother here. We start talking about the governments. NSA tracking people through their cell phone towers. There's articles on that. Washington Post had one. Five things NSA tracks. NPR was mentioning it. Metadata, emails, instant messages, Facebook posts, contact lists, you name it. And then you got the worst of the worst. You have China. They are insane with this tracking. Uh, China cooperates with giant technology companies like Google, and they build tools to track everyone in their country. Um, uh, a real example is Beijing, they have their, they rate their citizens, they call them social credits. Uh, there's an article on BBC that talks about that. And these people have no control over their scores, there's nothing they can do to change it. They are just pegged like that. You, it, it affects where they can travel, who they can talk to, it affects every part of their life. The scary thing is it's just a matter of time till we all start getting tracked like this. I mean, you see it a little bit here and there. But how far is it going to go? I guess it really depends on how far we allow it to go. So what does it take to be anonymous? Well, the first thing to realize is that more security equals less convenience. You're going to have to stop with the single sign-ons, uh, you know, friends that click away on Facebook or Instagram or any other social media. You're just going to have to give that up. Save passwords, yeah, that's gone. Smartphones, might as well just crush them right now. And paying with credit cards and debit cards, Google loves tracking that data too. It doesn't even matter if you're online. They can track your credit cards and debit card transactions. Uh, I, I, I identified this, or I, I set this up in a few different levels here. So level one is stuff you should already be doing. Level two is the easy stuff. Level three is getting a little bit harder. And level four is the land of the tinfoil hats. That's just plain up crazy stuff that people would do to stay anonymous. but 
there's, st there's still practical reasons to do that. Uh, a lot of this centers around security, just protecting yourself and preventing your information from getting out. So level one, of course, you've seen the standard passwords that people use. You have something simple like password as your password. You shouldn't be doing that. You should start being using. You should start using strong passwords. Of course, I'm sure a lot of you people use strong passwords in this room, but I still get away with my standard like three passwords that I remember that are super simple, and I just need to start using more password management, like a password manager. Uh, change your passwords frequently. That's really hard to do for me. I'm sure it's hard for everyone else to do as well. And uh, yeah, so password managers. KeyPass is one that I prefer. Why change your passwords frequently? I heard that and never understood that. The reason you want to change your passwords frequently is because all the data breaches we get. So they constantly are getting the password. you use different passwords everywhere and have a strong password, it don't make sense to me. If somebody gets so, in, If you're using you a password manager, you don't even have to worry about the password. So you can just change it and it doesn't cost you any kind of brain function or anything like that. You may, you may have created a strong password. You may put it under lock and key. You have no idea what the other end is doing with your password. Yeah, rainbow right. tables make it, it really scary. It could be stored in plain text on the other end. You don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moving on to your web browser. You gotta start changing your uh, search engines. Uh, DuckDuckGo is what I use a lot of the time. I still use Google. I mean, <laughs> I'm still dealing with a lot of these things myself. Quaint is another uh, one, I believe it's based out of France. Uh, and you have another two options there if you want to look at them. Uh, cookies, you definitely want to remove third party cookies. Any kind of cookies you can get away from, they're, they're really bad when it comes to digital footprints. Google will actually track you through these cookies through different websites, same with Facebook. History, I mean, you know, you, you don't want people watching your history. You try to hide it from your family if you're watching something bad, but <laughs> it's just another way people track you. Uh, How much confidence do we have that people like DuckDuckGo and Quaint are not tracking you themselves? Well, that's the thing. We can't have confidence in anyone because they're always tracking us no matter what. Someone has some log somewhere. It's just distributing it in different areas and trying to remain anonymous. That, that's what they uh, claim, that they don't track Yep. It, right? But is there any indication that they do, that people leak that, ah, those guys are, are selling selling you down the road, it, or, or is the still the expectation that they really aren't tracking? You know, the expectation is that they're really not tracking you, even if you go to their website, I believe it starts talking about that. Uh, I mean, it's the, the old thing about if you don't ask me, if you don't believe me, just They don't store me. your personal information ever. And they show burning of logs with the dragon kind of thing. They don't follow you around with ads. Which, it, it seems like this is pretty accurate. Uh, if you start looking at, uh, like, NoScript, which is, a, which is a tool that allows you to look at what scripts run on websites, DuckDuckGo will actually work around that. So if you disable all scripts, DuckDuckGo will still produce search results out of it. DuckDuckGo also has a, a, an Onion service, so they actually are on Tor. So that, the thought of Tor is that you can remain anonymous on your end and the server doesn't know, and they're both communicating anonymously. So that in and of itself, I think, helps a little bit. FBI run exit notes. Yeah. Yeah, the exit nodes and the entry nodes are the, the serious ones because if they have control over all the nodes, then are you really safe from that either? Tor is probably about our best option to tell you the truth, though. Okay, so back to level one. We're still, I, I, that basically covers your web browser for level one. Social media is the next thing. You got to start reducing the amount of accounts you have. You know, uh, watch what you post because it, it's it's really bad out there. I mean, the polit political environment can make it even worse. Uh, you could have a Reddit post where you're just creating some GIF, and then the CNN's after you trying to get you to remove it. It's just getting really crazy out there. Ideally, you want to start moving away from every of this, all all of this stuff. Uh, Mastodon's a good solution, but even Mastodon social media. Cell phones, 
be very careful about giving out your cell phone number. I've never experienced this before until I started getting into these kind of groups. People like to deal with emails a lot more. People don't give out their cell phone numbers as much, which makes sense. You want to keep that number safe because it's a direct link to you. It has GPS data associated with you. It has a lot of other information associated with it. Uh, you can use, you got to use your smartphones less too. It's hard to put them away. Everyone's addicted these days. As you can see in the picture, everyone's looking down at their phone. I see it all the time now. Put Definitely put a password on your smartphone though. That's one of the ways you can secure yourself a little bit more. Mm -hmm. After that, two-factor authentication. Google has a good service for this. Uh, there's a few other ways to do this, but I would recommend using your bank for sure using two-factor for your bank because if someone gets your password for your bank, you're, you're basically done for unless you have two-factor authentication because you can get some message on your phone and then you can put it into the uh, bank and then you're good to go. But beyond that, you just need to clean up your digital footprint. Norton has an article where they talk about that. Uh, yeah, cleaning up your email or internet accounts Enter your name into several search engines to see what shows up. If you type your name into Google, I guarantee you'll see information about yourself, but there's other search engines that you can put your name into, and they're specifically designed to pull up people's information. Double check your privacy, just privacy settings. Don't trust them. They get set back to default. I've seen it happen plenty of times in Windows, where you set all your security as strong as you can, and then Windows sets it back up after an update. Uh, Again, with the strong, memorable passwords, That's keep all your software up to date. <laughs> Great, the strong, memorable password. You can start using fa phrases, though, too. If you make a phrase and then you start mixing in numbers and letters in with it, it it's, it's a difficult battle, though. I mean, it, you either memorize it or you write it down, and then you're only as safe as that piece of paper, then. It says review your mem uh, mobile use. If you don't need it, delete it. So all the apps you have, they track you. Uh, there's been cases where they'll actually track what you're doing at the time. There's a couple apps, I don't remember exactly what they were, but it was almost like they were having a remote session. They could see exactly how you were scrolling through and they were just running through all this information. They didn't even care. It was, they, they, were, they didn't even have to be in that information, but they were still in there. And build your reputation through behavior. If you're trying to make an image for yourself, you know, clean up uh, the partying on Facebook. No more drunk pictures, all that other stuff. Next thing, right? <laughs> Taking all the fun, uh, apparently. Take all the fun out of it. So now we're getting on to level two. It's the easy stuff. Uh, this is stuff that you, you gotta start doing, I guess. Or, you know, you gotta start getting used to doing. Uh, Start using password managers. Uh, I can show KeePass a little bit later, but don't use any gimmicks. By that I mean don't use a fingerprint, don't use a little pin, don't use uh, those uh, swipe motions. I'm sure everyone knows how unsecure the swipe motions are. Most people just use a, a letter, so you can go through 26 letters and you can find someone's password out. Uh, next on the list is texting. Right, texting. You said don't use a, your fingerprint? Uh, yeah, the fingerprint, I mean, if you want to get grotesque about it, someone could take your finger and then they have the fingerprint. But there's also... There's also... Yeah, your phone is your problem at that point. Right. But if you have uh, two-factor authentication, they're trying to get in your bank. Okay. Well, all they need is your fingerprint instead of your password to get into your phone. <laughs> the thing too is these these are simple <laughs> sensors as well, so you can fool them rather easily. I mean, right. like FaceTime, uh, the face recognition and whatnot. They haven't gotten it to the point where they can't tell the difference between your face. And a picture in your face in real time. Yep. Oh, wow. Me and my uh, buddies, that was one of the first things we did in uh, high school. Or it was closer towards college, but it was end of high school. The, this guy was all happy. He's like, I got face recognition. No one's going to be able to get it. We looked on Facebook, we printed off his picture, and we put it in front of the camera, and it just unlocked his camera. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. Don't use these gimmicks. They're, they're not going to help out at all. Uh, it's more of don't use a biological factor. Yeah, I think I yeah. moved back. Yeah, don't use the, something the, that you can't change. <laughs> yep. The other thing with fingerprints is you can clone fingerprints, and you can just use like a little piece of silicone. You can get into it. 
They've done it with uh, the gun locks that have fingerprints. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Those mm -hmm. fingerprints are not secure at all. Can also be compelled to offer them as property. Yeah. Huh? So biometrics can be like, used against you. If the court puts you know, yep. subpoenas your fingerprint, you they can subpoena you to unlock your phone. They can't subpoena, per se, like passwords all the time. But yeah, your property is, yeah. as long okay. as people yeah. won't use them. Mm -hmm. oh. the, the one thing that kind of makes me a little less sketchy about putting my fingerprint in the phone, though, is they use finger points. So they'll find different points of your finger instead of taking the whole <laughs> finger on it. But it's right. still a gimmick. It's a read accuracy. Yeah. Right. Uh, texting. You can't trust your mobile carrier to get your encryption. Uh, as soon as it goes to the mobile carrier, it's clear text anyways. They got your text messages there. Uh, by default, text messages aren't even encrypted. Uh, Apple offers a service called iMessage, and Android offers a service called Signal, which has end-to-end -end encryption when it comes to texting. I don't know exactly how the details work, but there's got to be some sort of key involved that adds encryption. Does the, the other person have to run that app? Yep, them? you have to actually run Signal on both uh, okay. phones in order for it to work. Moving on to email, start switching over to a new email box. Uh, you can start forwarding your emails from your current email box to a new email box. I'm specifically speaking to Google because Google is notorious for just digging through all your emails and just going at it, you know, trying to figure out ways to advertise to you or trying to figure out patterns in people's behavior. Uh, it's so who's a really better scary. email provider than Google? I it's would recommend form. Proton Mail. Proton Mail is pretty good. They have encryption, and they say that they can't even see your emails when it comes to that. Uh, a few more that I noticed online were Tutana, Mailbox, and Postesto. I can show Proton Mail. It's kind of cool. They also have an Onion service or an Onion router going on, so you can go into their email through Twitter. What, what is an Onion? Sorry. An Onion, I'll get into that a little bit okay. later. Uh, Tours a little bit later in this season. Will your slides be available to the group? Yep, I'll, yeah. I'll put these slides available to the group. Yeah. So moving on from email, I want to get into phone security again. Uh, at this point, iPhone versus Android, it really doesn't matter. You just need to configure your security settings the right way. I have a, a link to this guide that tells you how to set your security settings up a little bit better. Oops. And a little hiccup. And we're back from the beginning. <laughs> Hardware problem. I blame my laptop. <laughs> oh yeah, a little too far. Okay. Recap on the slides. Yeah, so that, that guy looked like it had a decent amount of detail. I kind of skimmed through it though, so just be weary. And when it comes to all this stuff, don't trust me for it. You gotta do your own research on this because at the end of the day, it's your security you're worried about. And you can't put that in the hands of other people. Make sure your apps don't have access to certain things like Instagram probably doesn't need access to your audio recorder. Or Facebook probably doesn't need your GPS information. Moving on to a, a kind of a touchy subject, in my opinion, is VPN. Because people think that VPN makes you completely secure, but it doesn't really do that. Your VPN provider still has all your information, they still know everything about you. And that really gets scary when you start talking about the eyes. Uh, so I'll start with the five eyes. It was established in 1946, and it looks like I messed up on the slide a little bit. But it's an Ill in intelligence agency, they consist of five major countries, the US, the UK, Austria, Canada, and New Zealand, they freely share information between each other when it comes to data. So if you're in one of the five eyes, they can still get to your records. All they gotta do is get a court order, they can get all your VPN records, they can figure out all your logs, your data is breached, or your anonymous activities are now not anonymous. The nine eyes is just an extension of that, it includes Denmark, France, the Netherlands, Norway, and then 14 eyes includes Belgium, Germany, Italy, Spain, and Sweden. Now, people will argue that it doesn't even matter if you're outside the 14 eyes with your VPN provider, because uh, with enough force from the government, they will get your records. And a lot of VPN providers will claim that they don't keep some sort of logs, but I've had it told me this way. 
Uh, anyone that's trying to troubleshoot a network or anything like that is going to have some sort of logs in order to be able to figure out the problem. So you've still got some sort of logs somewhere, right? Pretty sure. Now when it comes to your home network, get your own router and modem. Your, uh, your internet service provider has all your MAC addresses if you're just letting them deal with all that stuff. Uh, for your wireless, you want to hide your SSID. You don't want your neighbors to be able to see that you have wireless. Definitely change your default password, even though these days the default password's a little bit better. It's not just password, <laughs> but you still need to change it nonetheless. Uh, also, you can limit and filter devices that can connect to your network. Just be aware of what devices are connected because you never know who's on the other end. Uh, with wired stuff, this is ideally what I prefer. Uh, it's more secure, you get better connectivity, and yeah, it's great. Next, I'm going to start talking about the web browser again. Uh, you definitely need to start using Google Chrome less. My mentality about Google Chrome is if it's Google services, you might as well let Google have it anyways because they're going to have your information. So I usually compartmentalize my YouTube, my Gmail, and other Google services on Google Chrome. I'm trying to get away from Google Chrome, but it's pretty addictive, I'm not going to lie. I definitely use Firefox more. They, they're focused more towards privacy and security. I believe the other day I was reading something where they said they can't even tell how many users use it because of their privacy settings and everything. Plugins to consider at this point is uBlock Origin, which blocks pop-ups. It helps with YouTube a lot because you lose a lot of the advertisements. And HTTPS everywhere. There's still websites out there that just use clear text for your information, and anyone that's sent from the traffic can get it. Uh, I did touch a little bit on compartmentalization, but that's the idea of separating different forms of search in different browsers, like Google Chrome for YouTube and Firefox for your banking. Uh, Brave is another web browser that I like. It's somewhat security-centered, so if you need to separate your internet traffic a little bit further, you can use Brave as well. And if you look, there's more websites, or there's more web browsers. Now I'm going to get into your computer's OS. You definitely need to start using Linux if you're not. I mean, I'm sure I'm in a group where people use Linux, but it's way more secure compared to Windows and Mac because it's open source. You can see what's going on in it. Uh, if you do need to get started, I would recommend using virtual machines at first. Start up a virtual machine session on your Windows or Mac machine. They got plenty of YouTube videos on how to do that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend dual boot as much. You got to be really careful with that because you can completely hose up your C drive and Windows situation, or you can hose up Mac in another situation. I I, I like having a fully partitioned. Linux drive and a fully partitioned Windows drive. I'm not going to lie, I still use Windows for gaming. It's hard to get away from that, but Steam's starting to get a little bit better with that. And hopefully we have a little bit more talks in the future with that so I can start pushing more towards Linux. But, uh, but Linux is not as targeted as much from attackers either. There's a big Windows base, there's a lot of people you can trick there. And yeah, it's just a playground for criminals. Level three, we're getting a little bit harder here. Um, this is stuff where people might not necessarily even want to do this kind of stuff to remain anonymous online. Uh, I'm just going to start talking about like GPS and Bluetooth, anything wireless that gives out wireless information, you want to kind of stop using. You also want to get rid of all your social media. Uh, <laughs> I will do a shout out to Mastodon because they're decentralized. That means that different Parts of Mastodon are owned by different people, so it's not all one person that has your data. So it's a little less when it comes to data mining and everything like that. But I'm sure there's web crawlers out there that are getting the information anyway. There's, there's, there are sites that um, one, one of them in particular, I think, it was Tupdon, that actually sends all of your traffic over to a, a centralized site so that they can do searching on it. So there is a potential, depending on who your admin is, yeah. of, of things you know sifting through your data and whatnot. So you need to trust your admin, you need to trust how far you're throwing out your stuff. Right, and that goes to the conversation again. Can you really trust anyone out there online? If someone's pressured enough in a situation that compromises their well-being, can you trust that individual after a while? So we get rid of social media, we go back to the web browser. 
we start disabling stuff like JavaScript. This gets really, really messy because a lot of websites are reliant on JavaScript these days and it completely breaks a lot of things. Just recently, I tried to get into my bank and I had JavaScript disabled and it wouldn't allow me to log in. That, that happened the last few months or something. I was frustrated, I couldn't figure out what it was because I had no script running. I felt stupid at the end of the day because it was my fault that my bank didn't work. But uh, yeah, it definitely breaks websites. And it gives you a really good idea of what's running on the websites. If you look at a lot of websites, it'll show Facebook scripts, it'll show Google scripts, it'll show specific scripts from advertisements. It's really creepy how many scripts are actually out there on all these websites that are getting your information. It's also surprising how many things break when you turn off, like, um, like if you put a new block origin or privacy badger yeah. and anything, it's surprising how many sites just won't work or will act weird. <laughs> Because certain things don't load, yep. where they expect them to load. If I remember correctly, even Google Chrome was starting to prevent uh, uBlock Origin from the add-in list. And they wanted to use their own ad blocker, which of course would probably enable YouTube to block ads, or YouTube to have ads and other sites not to. But, you know, Google has its own agenda at this point. Yeah, so moving on to phones again. This is where you're getting your basic flip phone. Mm -hmm. This is where you're buying your phone with a, a you know a gift card or paying for it in cash. And if you you have to have a smartphone at this point, it's better to have an Android device. You can use uh, custom ROMs, ROMs such as Lineage and Copperhead. It looks like Lineage works good with uh, Google phones, LG, Motorola, and Samsung, and Copperhead works good with Pixel and Nexus. So start trying to. Who's producing who's produced these? Uh, I, I don't have that information, but if you look at the website, it kind of gives you a summary of it. So what, what advantage in security would somebody get? Mm -hmm. well, the Google Play Store is like disabled by default. All the Google services that come packaged in Android are gone at that point. So then you start using uh, an app store such as F-Droid. Uh, F-Droid allows you to use a lot of similar things like Google, but it isn't Google Play. You don't have as many apps. You're searching around for stuff that works, and some stuff doesn't work the greatest. But you're starting to lose that convenience because you're trying to focus more on your security at this point. You want to be able to en enable and disable features as you choose fit. So is it the, is it the Google Android operating system that just modified them? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So this one... So this Copperhead is secure Android. Uh, it's focused on so a hard mobile version. operating systems. Like I said, uh, both of these Copperhead and Lineage are based on the, the type of phones. Okay. I haven't gone through this process. I'm sure it feels like a nightmare at first, but if you do it a few times, you get used to imaging a phone. It's got to be like anything else after a while. But yeah, all, all these people advertise security and all this stuff, but it's really your responsibility. So when it comes if to I took my Samsung Verizon phone and put Lineage, on, Lineage OS on it, would Verizon still call my phone? And Talk to me on my left people call me. That's on my I don't know exactly That's how it would work, but it would have some sort of protocol involved with your SIM card, so it should be able to still communicate with the cell phone towers. It just takes apart that part where Google's involved or Verizon's involved where they have the default apps on your phone itself. You want to try it? Uh, yeah, sure. Is that phone in use all the time? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me get one off eBay and I'll... Uh, <laughs> well, you, but to, to try that, you have to have a new phone number. You have to have a phone number. No, you can use your SIM card. We can just take your SIM card out and put it into it. Like my phone has a SIM card, I can get the exact same phone and take my SIM card out and put it into the exact same phone and it works perfectly fine. Mine's micro SIM. I had to update from like the big SIM to the micro SIM. <laughs> so I had to go to Verizon store to change it. But if you have a SIM card, you're pretty good. There are phones that don't have SIM cards these days. But if you have a SIM card, I can see you not being able to switch it from one phone to the other relatively easily. So you're buying a burner phone, you go get it at Walmart with cash. Oh, yeah. Go to Verizon for your SIM. That starts Out getting tin tinfoil <laughs> land there, you know? Tinfoil hat land. You're you just just starting said, to... In this one, you just said buy a cash. 
Yep. Yeah, I started talking about cash because we got to start getting used to buying in cash or using <laughs> yeah. cards and everything like that. Yeah. If you really want to do it, you find a hobo, you have them get the gift cards for you, you have them go, you know, get the PC for you and all that other stuff, and you get your Bitcoin. You can get really crazy when it comes to. How do you order from Amazon, Amazon with cash? cash. You don't. You, don't. <laughs> you get Bitcoin, or you use gift cards. Oh, okay. I don't know if Amazon uses Bitcoin, do they? But not that I'm aware of. Okay. Of course, Amazon's got the, your history too, then. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Well, a lot of companies too have also cracked down on a lot of the anonymous type browsing or uh, buying and whatnot, like Verizon or yep. any of these other things. They want an actual person with an identity purchasing whatever that is that they're doing. And I know from personal experience, this, the IRS has it set up where you have to have a mobile phone that gives out details about yourself before you can actually sign up for an account yeah. on there. Yeah, it's getting and if you have a provider that doesn't provide that information to them, like say Ting, uh, then you cannot sign up online to the IRS site at all. That's Even after insane. giving them every other little bit of information you can possibly give them. Mm. Yeah, big brother's watching. But uh, if you really want to shop anonymous, we're not using Amazon anyways, right? We're using Tor. We're getting into the Tor networks, and we're trying to buy from Tor websites, and then they're shipping it to a drop zone or something. You know, I'm getting real crazy about it here. But uh, this this all this all focuses towards uh, spending towards a not anonymous anonymous <laughs> But yeah, you, you start getting prepaid cards. You have strangers buy them. Like I said, a homeless person's the the best example I got because it's funny. But you can just go up to someone that's uh, at the grocery store and say, "Hey, I got a crazy ex. I need you to get these gift cards for me because you know I'm trying to be anonymous and she's tracking me down on my phone. I need to get a burner phone or something." You can create as many stories as you want. This gets into the spoofing area and stuff. You know, you're trying to trick people, social engineering and whatnot, to hide your identity. Yeah. <laughs> But well, there's other cryptocurrencies besides uh, Bitcoin, and blockchain is trackable. The, the, the way you truly get anonymous with it is you start not, uh, laundering your Bitcoins. They have services. Some of them are sketchy. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> if you're talking about anonymous services, you got to trust these people to give them Bitcoin, to mix it all together with other Bitcoins, and then give you your rate back. From what I hear, these services are about twice as much. So if you're running 100 bucks, you're paying 200 bucks to get your 100 bucks. Wow. But you're, you're talking about someone that's taking on a lot of risk, anonymizing your currency. God knows what you're going to use it for, right? <laughs> now we start talking about the fun stuff. We start getting into Tor. Tor is a protocol, but Tor browser is better known. They use the Tor protocol with their core networks, and their web browser is based off of Firefox. There's a Android app that you can get, uh, Orbox and Orfox. Orbox is the, the routing that connects your phone to the Tor services, and Orfox is the browser you use. Tor is an overlaying network. It's on top of another network. It just encrypts and reroutes using a minimum of three relays. Uh, each relay would have its own individual key. You have an entry point, a middle point, and an extra exit point. I believe someone mentioned it earlier. If someone has an entry point and an exit point, it makes it a lot easier to figure out what people are doing on the network. That's one of the flaws of Tor, and there's no real good way of working around that. Entry points, the information they get is they just know that you, you have encrypted data and uh, they know that you're using Tor. The middle points just know that there's data transmitting between the networks and the exit points actually get to see a little bit of what's going on. They get to see what uh, websites are being accessed because when you're getting outside of the Tor network, you have to get into the normal internet so you have to be able to communicate in some sort of way that makes it easier for servers to read. A little bit more about Tor, you just got to keep in mind Tor doesn't block JavaScript by default. You can go into the really strict options in Tor, but again, this breaks websites. Uh, it's the safest option out there when you're talking about being anonymous. Uh, you definitely don't want to sign into online accounts at all, <laughs> otherwise it breaches you. Uh, 
use the default Tor browser. Don't be looking for any customization or anything like that. Don't add any add-ons. The whole idea of the Tor browser is to make everyone look the same. And never go full screen in it because, again, they can tell what aspect ratio you're using. So they also have a little bit of a footprint going on of what your your internet is or what your, your you are, who you are. Uh, don't type inside websites. They, there's actually a decent amount of knowledge being put into forensics when it comes to typing. So they can tell how fast you're typing. They can tell what common words you use. If you're gonna really try to get anonymous with this stuff, you're starting to type into a text document and then you copy and paste into it. And you wanna use a little bit of wordsmithing to change your wording around so you know it doesn't look like you. <laughs> uh, yeah, they can track your keystrokes. strokes. So this is the point where I'd like to show you Tor a little bit. I have three websites that have Onion, Onion website links to, so I can basically go to these websites through Tor. So you can go to Facebook on, I know, on right? Tor. That's that's ironic, isn't it? Because Facebook tracks people like no other. But you want to be you want to be able to go on to Tor so your uh, your boss doesn't see you or you know anyone else that can see you doesn't know that you're going on to Facebook at that time. Primarily, it's so you don't get fired, I guess. So that if you're in a hostile country, you sure. know something that would easily be seen by a lot of people. That too. Yeah. That, that aggressive yeah. government can't stop you from doing that. It's pretty easy to use Tor. <clears throat> yeah, Tor works in the website. Or, uh, Tor works, works in the library. <laughs> Uh, some places doesn't work. I tried it at a, a hospital the other day, and it just wouldn't work. There's ways around that you can create a bridge, but it looked like it started costing money. Hospitals really also work. get very, um, a lot of places get really uh, strict about what ports they'll allow out of their network. Usually right. it's like 880 and 443, because I've tried to do like SSH and whatnot, and a lot of them will like block port 20, uh, 22. So a lot of the Tor websites, you're just gonna have to copy and paste. There's no way you're gonna remember this stuff. Tor's a little bit slower too, because you're adding encryption and a lot of different layers to it. So now I'm on DuckDuckGo on Tor. You can see it shows me my circuit here. I think uh, you're on the wrong screen. screen. Oh, oh, that's why. <laughs> it's anonymous. It's really yeah, anonymous. Yeah, you guys can't see what I'm doing. Now I gotta look like this. I see what you mean, Craig. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, that's, that's so it shows this browser. It shows the guard node, which is supposedly supposed to be a little bit more secure. You kind of know who the guard is. You kind of stick to that one node, and then you start bouncing off. This one says Portland, Ukraine, and a couple more relays. Then it shows Onion Route. Now the the relays only show up when you're dealing with uh, Onion routing, because you don't get to know the IP address. You kind of get a general idea where it is, and then the server decides to give you an IP address to go to, and you go to that IP address, and you're at the site. It's a little bit weird. I, I couldn't understand it. It's hard for me to wrap my mind around it. It's just it's really complex for me. But I can just start searching DuckDuckGo anonymously. Yeah, so that gives you a little bit more perspective of the speed. We get search for the anarchist cookbook. Anarchist cookbook? Oh yeah. <laughs> Getting some trouble here, right? <laughs> there is the hidden wiki. Wiki. The hidden wiki is uh it, it looks like it was separated. There's a few mirrors of it now, but due to government breaking in child porn yeah. basically. Yeah. The hidden wiki had a lot of bad links to it, so they broke it up. I mean, there's there's useful services on this stuff though. You know, if you're if you're a journalist and you're trying to be anonymous and you're trying to send out an email to someone or even post into Facebook in a country that's not happy about Facebook, you can do it. So there's Facebook. I want to try to create a Proton email with this. But I gotta turn my head every two seconds. Let's see how it works. There we 
with me for a second. If you use that, go. Mm -hmm. How can you get switch it? So this is an example of key pass here. Uh, looks like you're using. Uh -huh. I'm not showing you mine. You don't get to see mine. Come on now. Oh, you might have saw something there for a second. I might just put garbly gook in there. This takes a little too long. Oh, it moves over to the dual screen. So key pass has you create a master password. Let's make it password, that sounds fun. What do you mean by that? I don't know. It's yeah, maybe it will. Looks like it. Yeah, that's the way it calls it. It's pretty low. Okay. Let's have me do a few more settings here. There we go. Mm -hmm. Sample entry. So we would say, and the nice thing about key pass is you can just randomly generate passwords. Uh, I'll make it for you. You can make them as complicated or as less complicated as you want. Is that a, a plugin for your browser? What? KeyPass? KeyPass? No, KeyPass is actually an application I use through Linux. There's a, okay. there's a version for Windows and I think Mac's compatible too. I, I just stumbled across KeyPass and I've gotten used to it so I don't want to change separate, from it. Separate executable zone. Has an yep. database that sits on your file system. Yeah. Also have it on cell phone. Basic account. Free. Ooh, that's supposed to show you it's encrypted. <laughs> so you're creating a new uh, Proton account? On tour. So theoretically it's anonymous besides the live broadcaster. <laughs> <laughs> it's not live broadcasting, unfortunately the stream's not working. Oh, bummer. But it is recording. But it is recording. It's recording. But there's a gap in the recording. The good thing is I'll be able to change the password before the recording's published. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> We had a little technical Let's not worry about recovery email, we're being risky. Warning, confirm. Are we human? But, but there's actually recording. Look at that. See, email, so. SMS. That, that's all stuff that I'm telling you. SMS, of course. Anonymous. Yeah. Only oh, this is going to be heartbreaker. Oh, I never see that. That's a bicycle. Right there. And recapture. That's a bicycle. Am I missing any? I don't think I am. Probably. That's it. Verified. I was. Oh, man. This is rough. I'm gonna bring it over here. <laughs> there's the bike. I missed one. No, wait, wait, there's another one. Doesn't everyone hate this catch up stuff? Yep. This is horrible. Oh, I had another one populate where the other one disappeared. I meant that to the fight. Oh, yeah, that helps a lot. Now it's having me identify storefronts. I've not done much of it. Yeah, it's your mom. Look, you're buying two letters, and you're like, is that two Ds or W? Exactly, there are two Us. I heard about two Ws. I heard can't, so that's a high price. I don't remember. I can never. I hate them. I'm not sure either. I agree. It's like sometimes you'll be like, I'm pretty sure that that's it. Sometimes it fiddles with the aspect ratio. Do I usually throw one? Now it's having me verify cars. So yeah. like, oh, okay. so yeah. quick can you tell a lot yeah. of people make emails on this service? I've been using mm -hmm. different window managers, so. Did you say that address was taken? Really no. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's literally still having me do the catch up. Uh, I had four different catch up sets. Yeah. That I had to do. Now I've finished it. Now it's saying it's loading. Now I have to do it again later. <laughs> Cinnamon or me? It's not playing. Depending on whether you want uh, GTK 3 or 2. Oh, that, that one's easier. Well, it's like, yeah. how top much, top what percentage of the segment qualifies? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I put that one there. I'm scared. Uh, oh, traffic lights. 
It's because you're you're on as anonymous, and so right. it's going to. It's definitely going to make sure I'm not a robot. But this is another well, example. Well, that, that too, and you're also training the self-driving car. Oh, don't forget that. <laughs> oh, AI. That's, that's yeah. not a light in the pool. <laughs> I should really switch this over to mirrored monitors. Now it's pissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 At this point, like at this, no, I think it's, 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 it's probably because it can't set the cookie properly. Yeah. I think it's not going to work. On no, it's not going to work on, on that. No. Oh. The way that you're set up. No. All right. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> get through it. The SMS. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to use something else. <laughs> uh, I, mean, gotcha. I will use SMS in this case. But that's not helpful for this as a demonstration. Yeah, well, then I guess I won't do the email. Uh, yeah, they got you. They, they got me at this point. They do. That, that's a good example of how hard it is to be under a <laughs> Yeah, that's as much as I want to show you tour. I really okay. don't want to get too much deeper into there because... Who knows if it's safe for work? Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> Search tour on your own time. I didn't know tour was illegal. Tour's not illegal, but there's a lot of services be. that are illegal on tour. There's a lot of folks that want to be anonymous on tour. Silk Road. Yeah. Mm. I wanted to show you a Linux distribution too. It's called Tails. It just boots up into tour. It uses the tour protocol right from the beginning. I won't try to surf tour on it because we saw my first experience on tour. What's a Tails fork from? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, it's Debian. I tried to sudo it the other day or use root and it wouldn't let me. You're like locked out of uh, any kind of administrative access on it because they want it as protected as possible. Typically it's on a flash drive and you don't put it on the OS at all. In this case I put it on a virtual machine truck so I could show it as an example. Uh, unfortunately it's going to be a little slow. It's getting there. It has me shoes my keyboard, and then it boots up into Tails. So it's like a live, live image? Yep. Uh, it has some persistent storage. I think it's encrypted. Oh, it's got to be encrypted. It's a now i got to find my mouse again. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a that lightweight like Linux. That's what it feels right. like to me. Uh, the head is probably the command line version. Oh, headless. Did it say headless? What did it say? I don't remember what it said. The version of Sonic, right? Then you can see Tor is right in the beginning. You got Thunderbird, you got your password manager, you have your terminal, you have your instant messenger. There's a few decent tools on here. I'll get you doing what you need to do anonymously. Yeah. That's Tails. Okay. So I covered a few different tour sites there. I tried to create an email and failed horribly. But it's just a good example of how hard it is to remain anonymous online. I touched on Tails. I explained how it was a USB drive OS, basically. Uh, it does have encrypted persistent storage, and it runs on Tor by default. Now uh, we get into the level four, the land of the tinfoil hats. This is the best That's tinfoil hat. That's a pretty cool hat. Yeah. I'm actually going to make this when I go home. Is it a black hat? Uh, no smartphones, no phones at all. Just throw them away, smash them, do whatever. Definitely need to start spoofing your MAC address. I found a few decent MAC addresses to choose from. Eat dead beef and coffee, coffee, zero, zero. Cafe, coffee. Cafe, coffee, zero, zero. I like that. Yep. manufactured uh, coffee. Yeah. You gotta start watching out for social engineering. Starbucks. Don't trust anyone. <laughs> yeah, Starbucks. <laughs> don't trust anyone out there. Uh, you don't disclose any personal information. 
don't talk to strangers, you change your <laughs> speech patterns, you try to erase your idea as much as possible, you even fill up your email with mail bombers, which are just spam mail, non-stop into your mailbox. Uh, you upload random pictures of random people on your social media so no one's able to identify you. Yeah. You change your account info with inaccurate information. Yeah, I live in Puerto Rico now. Did you say Separate social media? Sorry? Did you say social media? I know, yeah. right? At this point, this, it's, Why it's, it's, racing, up on that? it's more well, it's racing your digital footprint at this point. You're yeah. trying to get away from your idea as much as possible. Yeah. You're trying to destroy your online identity. Uh, this is why you would delete as many counts as possible as well. And I hit the wrong key. Change your yes. Yep. Any word you say can be identified yeah. to you. <laughs> and uh, you can also start testing how anonymous you are. Uh, PIPL is a database that looks up people. So if you type in your name, it'll show you a lot of information about yourself. Uh, you type in anyone, you can get a lot of information extracted from it. Uh, Tiny Eyes is a reverse image search. So if you're looking through images, you can see where they're on or where they're available. And uh, just Google yourself. There's other ways to find your identity online. I'm sure there's plenty of paid services as well that work on removing parts of your identity. If you Google yourself, wouldn't that put your name in a search? You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. You can even go somewhere like whitepages.com, which has got scary amounts of detail. Oh, uh, whitepages.com. Yeah. Okay. Like every Still single address that you've ever been, which is you know not yeah. trusted information at all at any bank or UPS <laughs> or anything like that. So the the this is towards the end of the talk now, but. The, the real question is who you're trying to be anonymous to, because there's no way we're going to do all this crazy stuff. There's no way I'm going to do most of this stuff, but I like to have a little bit of fun with it here and there. You're trying to be anonymous for your family, that's easy to leak your internet history. You know, uh, If you're trying to be anonymous for your ISP, maybe a VPN is what you need, but then your VPN has the traffic. If you're trying to be anonymous to your government, you don't want to use VPN, you're starting to use Tor. If you're trying to be anonymous to everyone, just don't go online, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's all I got for you guys, though. You got any questions about any of this stuff? Yeah, I mean, how, well, go ahead. I had a question about password manager. I've never yep. used one. It seems like that's all your passwords in one place, that it would be a good place to attack, and, and I don't know how reliable they are. So you start using carpent, carpent, carpent I can't even say it right. You Compartment separate parts. different parts of your Compartmentalize. accounts. Compartmentalize, yeah. yeah. So you. So my gaming accounts are on a different one. My a different one. on a different one. Right. Different my bills file. are on a different one. So, so, so the password manager he showed is actually storing it in an encrypted database. And how? What is the the history of people breaking those or cracking them? Well, they'd have to know which file first, right? Right. But so assume, you put different files in different places. Right. But assuming, using different. So I guess are they in effect secure? I. I well, it, depends it, on which that, that also comes into question, do you have a secure password you're using for it? The easier your password's to figure out, the easier it is to break your database. Encryption is pretty strong these days, so they say that, uh, help me out here. So you have a password. Computers of the future are going to be able to hack encryption in 15 You have seconds. a password to get into this. Yep. And you're saying you compartmentalize and you probably have different passwords then for each of the. Yep. But you can still have fewer yes, passwords that yes. way. Huh. And bigger passwords. There's no real easy way. Yeah to protect yourself when it comes to passwords. Okay. But, and the more you involve the human element to it, the worse yeah. off you are. A lot of this breaks down because being, mm -hmm. being a human being, we're not necessarily tied into the machine most of the time. Yet. Um, yet. So the, the problem is that if you have something where it's very difficult for you to get into your own files or whatnot, you're gonna try and find short circuits. Yes. To get into it, you're going to use smaller passwords. You're going to use things that you remember all the time. You're going to write it down on post-it notes uh, and yep. put it under your desk. Stick yep. it on the front of the terminal. Yeah, or stick it on front of the terminal and such. So, the, yeah. the it's not so much you know how how encrypted this stuff is. It's how many fingerprints and how many other things you have leading up to whatever that secured element are that you have in an external environment. Yep. So it's not necessarily tied to your you your mental capacities or other things that are on your person. Yeah, a lot of it points down to human human error at the end of the day. You use the same password for your bank as you use for Facebook, as you use for your Google account. Before you know it, all they got to do is know one password. Yeah. yeah. 
at least if you have a password manager, they have to get onto your physical PC and know your password to get into there. And they might even need to know your login password even to get to your password manager. And yeah. if you have your file in a spot that's not necessarily known, then you're a little bit further, you know. And also, you gotta make it harder for people to go for it. Mm -hmm. You know, you, people that are trying to get your data wanna get in and get out real quick. They don't wanna be identified. So they're looking for the easy soft targets. They're talking about spreadsheets of people that have already been compromised before. That's the people they go after. So if you make okay. yourself less of a squeeze, they're not gonna go after you. Well, and there's in also, theory. There's also sites that have, um, have been compromised that have email addresses and passwords that were not encrypted. Uh, yes. It linked in LinkedIn. among LinkedIn. other things, yep. you know, Google. the uh, this, the site for the game store that I like going to a lot, you know, those folks have got, got hacked at one point. So it, this stuff is out there and if you've managed to use that password over and over again, or if you use personally identifying information for yourself, I mean, assume that anything that's related to your person and your personal identification stuff is out there in some capacity. Mm -hmm. So it's probably not safe to use that as part of your password. So the password manager gives you, among other things, a separate password for every item. So your worst yeah. hit is one account. Right. If someone gets a hold of your if password. You've got, if you've got an account compromise and somebody hacks the database, they've got your email address and they've got a password, right? Okay. They don't. They can't spray that on all the common accounts because and see yeah. what see what offs. Yeah. Right? You're basically offloading then, or remembering that to the computer. Yeah. But then you have an additional layer there too, right? If you've got that spray, you know, somebody spraying those accounts, yeah. and then you've got two FA bolted on to you, whether it's you know an authenticator app, whether it's SMS, whether whatever it might be, yeah. and there's another layer of security. Then you've got, like I do, you have two FA to get into your master database to your password manager. Plus two FA to okay. get into the other accounts. Okay. So there, it's very unlikely that you know my, my accounts, most of yeah. my accounts with with two FA are going to get compromised. Yeah. But if they do, yeah. you know, usually you get a log, you, know, you get a login notification that monitor that stuff too, and you can go and either notify or change it anyway. Yeah. But if okay. you use the same password on multiple, multiple, multiple yeah. accounts, you're going to screw with the key finishing yeah. it, so she doesn't even know. Yeah. Like you were talking about the two-factor authentication. That's Another way you make your password database yeah. a lot safer. Sure. Your password doesn't even matter what your password is at that point if right. the 2FA doesn't work. Yeah. And if the spoof your 2FA as well. Yep. Yeah. yeah, of course. But, you know, at that point, they, the they got you. You're done for anyways, right? The they got that. The yeah. No, that's one, that's one 2FA mechanism for one account. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so you okay. got the abstraction going on. Or you're trying to, carp carp I can't even say it. Compartmentalize. Thank you. Compartmentalize. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. When I was, this, this is a broader question about what we're really going to do about this life. And when I listen to this, I'm going, how much of it am I going to implement? And how, how effective would that actually be? And I'm thinking a lot of it sounds like too much trouble, and that's even for me. Of course, the, the other thing is, who cares? I mean, it's just, my, the, the guy, one of the guys in this world I, I worry about is the NSA guy that has to monitor my phone calls. <laughs> poor guy. No, I'm worried about the list of them. This poor guy, he must have done something wrong. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's but you know, that, so, you know, it, it, when you look at the, the number of ways that we can be tracked and the amount of data on us that's out there, uh, including the full footprint of where we've been all day, every day, because we carry a cell phone with us and, our, and the provider knows, they know everybody in the room. But collectively, our, our cell phone providers knows everybody who's in this room that we're not never really get it. Now, I don't know how easy it is to knit that together, but it probably takes a little bit of work. I mean, they do it on TV in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Bounty hunters can get a hold of that information. I mean, they can the, find the you question is what, is there anything you, we could really do about this? It, because the, the, the basis of the problem is that the data exists. Yep. When I was born, and if you wanted to surveil somebody, you had to park a, a car outside their house, and somebody had to get up there with uh, clips and clip on a, uh, you know, the phone wires or something like that. And that was really hard to do. So, uh, now, I mean, you know, somebody can be sitting in the Uzbekistan and be monitoring all of us. I guess if they could turn on the, um, somebody's cell phone in here and listen to that. Well, they don't even have to. They just give you convenience. 
So they give you a hundred and fifty dollar device that plays Jimmy Buffett right. on your desktop. <laughs> That's <Sorry>. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, you know, or, or mm -hmm. his cookies for you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I still think is there anything we can really do about this? I still think do about it. I still think there's a lot we could do. Uh, the biggest thing is that the government's been secretly getting into our privacy for a long, long time, and we've just become, you know, numb to it. We've accepted it. We see news broadcasts that talk about how the government has all our data and we can't do anything about it. Of course we can. We're the people of the country. We can fight back. We can say, no, we don't want this data. You're starting to do it too. You can actually ask a company to give you all the records of your data and then you can ask them to remove the data from their servers. This is in Europe. The European Union started yeah, that would be a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I don't even have a Facebook account, but I'm sure that I'm all over Facebook from other people who do. Facebook has ghost accounts. Yeah. So if they have your con if someone gave their contact information to Facebook and Facebook has a phone number with your name on it, they created a ghost account for you. Well, Facebook also has the like button on every single website that's out there, and also Facebook login as well. Yeah. So anytime that you go to a website, they're pinging Facebook to say, hey, you know, such and such is over here, and whatever cookie and whatnot that they have on there gets sent over to Facebook. Let's put it this way. They like their correlation data. Yeah. <laughs> they like they really data. like their correlation data. Well, advertisers really like it because if they can influence you and you feel like it's your decision versus their advertisement, then they've won. They can advertise whatever they want to. You can buy whatever product they want you to buy. I don't buy it. Great. Things <laughs> blocked at the router. <laughs> there you go. Start talking about blocking it directly at the router. Then you just use Tor. Yeah. Yeah. Tor. You can get right to it. Yeah. But Tor's slow. It, it is. It's definitely slow. It's not worth watching videos on Tor. If you're using Tor, you're communicating with chat. Well, you're, you're, you're dipping directly over to Poland and then over to the Ukraine. Yep. <laughs> you hop in three different locations just to, just for starters. If you want to do more, you can have like 500 hops there. It's really slow at that point. Something to be aware of is if you're looking at scrubbing your backpack, probably not smoking the pay services that are out there and actually pay for to get your account in. Because if you, for, for example, you can get, you know, uh, get insight into yeah. this if you've ever been hired at a large company in the HR department that's research on you, um, you can ask them, you know, can I get a copy of the research done? And they will provide, some will provide that to you, and you can look and see, oh, well, they they did a search for everything that's even remotely looks like my, my name, and track this person through here, track that person through there, and there's me. There's the path they follow. I can see everywhere I've lived in the last 10 years. And they went to each of those townships, each of those counties, and you know, asked them for my public record, asked them for court cases, asked, asked for liens against property, asked for uh, whatever, marriage records. And they will do that because I got, my, <laughs> I got mine last year. In some cases, it's better to have the real information out there, though, than yes, because yes. sometimes there's somebody else with your same name and if they get confused, mm. and there's a warrant for your arrest. Yep. Yep. Yeah, there's there's some people that have my name that have done some unsavory things. Yep. And that's too bad. So it, it really depends on what you want to present. If you want to present nothing at all, you want to present a spilled a false pre a, 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 a False positive. Not really false positive, but you want to show carefully crafted identity, or do you want to have the real thing? Oh, clear. Clear. oh yeah, at this point you can't just you're not have something. <laughs> you can't not just have something because you got a picture of yourself somewhere, someplace. Someone might have took it. You know, your ID's out there somewhere. You might as well just get in front of it and try to make a professional image for yourself. That goes back to the Facebook thing. You know, you don't show your partying on Facebook. You kind of keep you quiet, or you just remove Facebook altogether and you go to Mastodon. Perfect part of the sound on Facebook, and that's all for you. Yeah. Now that I haven't had Facebook for a while, it's not that big of a deal. But I installed it the other day and logged in, and I almost got the urge to scroll. <laughs> almost got it. And that's a drug in and of itself. You know, you're getting the dopamine just from scrolling and getting some information, liking, posting, and then getting liked on your posts. It's all the lottery system, you know. Can you use a space app to slow down your app launches and that'll reduce your dopamine hit. 
<laughs> there's an app. There's an app called Space. Well, we don't That's want to awesome. reduce it. Though. Of course, yeah, you're right. You want to increase it? You know? No. Yeah, that's bad. That's, that's as bad as the gaming loot boxes, you know? That's the lottery for video games at this point. Uh, bat, uh, Battlefront 2 was in the news for this stuff. Uh, you know, they're making kids addicted to lottery or gambling before they're even old enough to gamble. That's a scary thought. And that kind of goes back to the advertising thing. We've, we've really got to start fighting the advertising more than anything. And the best way to fight advertising is becoming anonymous a lot more. Moving a lot of your information offline that you can. Blocked at the router. Yeah, blocked at the router. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's DNS black holing the uh, the ad return. Yeah. yeah. And then giving less information to advertisers than all possible. Yeah. <laughs> ghostery, no screen. No just script. Ghost, just ghostery at all. Uh, the first the furthest I've gone is no scripts. And that ghostery, you can itemize, something. you can itemize tracking services, which is pretty handy. Um, you know, not, not what's it called? But a ghostery. Ghostery. G H O S T E R Y. <clears throat> oh, he's gonna bring it up. I'm gonna bring it up. I gotta go mirrored though. I can't keep turning my head. That's hurting. <laughs> mirrored. I'm not even that old. Screen, that screen mirror. Get to see everything. I know, right? I got nothing to. Got nothing I, <laughs> I removed all the stuff last night. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are those tabs on your browser? I know, right? Let's so, faster, so safer, some, and smarter browsing. Go so some stuff really complains that you're using this. Like, yeah. some videos won't play, like, on SNBC mm -hmm. and things of that nature. But it uh, it's very effective for, for the most part, as far as I can tell. Uh, but some sites do not like me, you know, like, no script. But We don't have any sound, do we? I'm sorry. Just back right in the back pocket. So you use yeah. this as your browser then? Uh, I use it, yeah, as yeah. a browser. But any time I touch Chrome, it's on there. Well, I'll just okay. check it. Loading so. exposure to advertising. The only other one I've used as a browser is Brave. Brave. They, they claim to be security-centric. I can do it. I can do it. Brave. Yeah. Block certain things. There's Pi-hole. Got one. Block a bunch of your DNS uh, stuff. You're gonna have to give it a separate PPA for it. I don't know. Password is dot 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 I gotta update that one by the way. Unicode. I gotta change that one. It's called the circle. Yeah, you can't believe it. It's Unicode. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's I think you have to learn the Unicode. If I use it for more than a week, I'm typing it like that. Yeah. I've gotten good with phrases and stuff like that. I'll think like, this mic here is called blue stairs, so I'll mix those together, and then I have blue stairs with three and all this other stuff. Leap. Leads the implementation of letters with numbers. So L would be seven, three E would be three, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. It kind of helps a little bit. There's nothing real special about Brave, but it's just the idea of separating everything. Like a good example here would be, let's say, I was watching it doesn't really do HTTPS everywhere by default, and uh, a couple other nice little things. So this is ideally how you want to <laughs> compartmentalize. Yeah, through Google. Right. Google for Google, that's my idea. So Chrome, might as well watch YouTube on there. Well, I mean, you can just Google thing. with your brave web browser. I don't know. Oh, jeez. You know, You're I'm exposed. Yep. I'm in touched. trouble now. I'm new white. I touched it. Looks like that great new world. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but links. Like, you were you were talking about key pass yeah. a little bit. So yeah. Don't click on links. That browser will uh, link from some database of that. Database tests. Yeah. I can create another. Links. You can send to your roller. bank via yeah. links. <laughs> That's a sweet bank. I gotta get yeah, that. Okay. <laughs> they used to have um, links running on these dumb terminals at Michigan State. They had just like an email program up. Yeah. And uh, 
bring some time here all set? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and so I figured out the no, that's two different things here. <laughs> <That's laughs> okay. Like they're like orange and black screens. Just uh, call this is great. Bank. UPS is like to, to get delivery confirmations. Screen scraping is very popular. You get the technologies that will do that too. Yeah, so you set up two different databases. Let's say this one's your bank one, yeah. this one's your gaming one, and you could add another okay. one for another thing. But each one would have individual passwords. Uh, as far as the two factors concerned, you can add keys. I just haven't done it before. Or you can add, you get like a file which gives you the two factor kind of thing. I'm not well versed with this stuff. Uh oh. You know, right? Any, anyone got any ideas of things to search on Tor? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about Panoptic Click a little bit. What is it? Panoptic Click. It is fingerprinting your web browser. How unique is your web browser in the entire world? You said Panoptic Click? Yes. Panoptic Click. Sorry. I read a post history already gives me away. Your tone of voice does too. Yeah. Language. Your browser safe. Test me. Testing your browser. Oh, excuse me while I install some cookies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should That's have third party cookie yeah. yeah. No, you're Block fine. Blocking, tracking, yeah, yeah. yeah. yes, yes, no, what's no? Does your browser unblock third party prompts to harder? Do not track. No. Shields up from uh, Steve Gibson. That only does port. Your yeah. browser has a unique fingerprint. Ah, what is this? This is, uh, this is Firefox. Let's see what Brave does. Test it. Might as well run Chrome too. Brave looks like it's the same. And then, and then also do it in the incognito mode in the browser. Oh, okay. I think they've got some crypto play that they're working yeah. on for some yeah. advertising to kind of try to get a little high. I actually don't know what Firefox business model is. <laughs> Nothing changed from uh, incognito mode. The only thing incognito mode does is remove your history. So, browser fingerprinting is very interesting. It, it for, does yeah. the things you talked about a little earlier, like yeah. figuring out your uh, screen resolution, but it also tries to set a cookie on your, yeah. on your HTML canvas. Yeah. Oh, wow. That really, really fast. Let's see what it says for Torch. All right. All checks. Nice. Proof. Yep. Or they're like trying to do other things like uh, fingerprint your machine, which are the processors you use, in terms of the patch level you're on, and so far as you're what we need to do. It was in the last year. I was trying to look at places to find onion sites. The best place I found to find onion sites is Reddit. They have a, a few websites that show onion sites, but you get a lot. So, what is an onion site? Looked in Time Magazine. Onion site has the .onion extension. It's usually like a very complicated website yeah. URL kind of thing, but it takes you to a Tor server. So, so it's, it's the Tor path to get the server you would normally just type. And you can also post your own site. The server doesn't know who you are. You don't know who the server okay. is. Complete an anonymous traffic. And is there, is there an Onion organization that assigns these names, or do you just make them up? Uh, they randomly generate. Uh, Facebook okay. was able to run a script to randomly generate until it said something that was close to Facebook. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's funny, it's Panoptic, but allows you to share your results on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and Twitter. Google Plus, too. Look at that. Yeah, they're on top of it. They're on it. They're very up to date. You could tweet it, too, it looked like. Google Plus. 
Sure. The government's really been cracking down a lot of this. Put the, put the Google stuff. Plus uh, like zero drops in. I'm sure it gets you absolutely nothing. We're sorry. <laughs> right. I tried for a long time ago to just to see what it was, but I did a search in Google. I don't know what is that? And I kept getting all different language results, and I said, I can't read this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if one of the approaches might be everybody set their computer to the same statistical information. So it all comes up that everybody looks the same. Well, we're trying to do geolocation to try and figure out your default language. So if we all decide to use Spanish or something like that, right? Every single Spanish. characteristic, you know, just make <laughs> same. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's all I have for you guys. All right, thank you. All right, please come.